So you've been diagnosed with androgenetic alopecia and you've been trying pharmacological interventions like finasteride and minoxidil, but to your horror, it didn't give you any satisfactory results because you've already lost too much ground. And in fact, you've lost so much hair to the point that you're now considered a bad candidate for a hair transplant. This is, of course, a very specific case, but it's not an uncommon case. And previously, these kind of patients had no choice but to just shave it, bro. But this might change with vertoporfin, as interesting new developments have been happening that will, in my opinion, take the whole hair loss industry by storm. Also, keep watching the video because I'll be giving you the one thing that you can do to help speed up the process of approving vertoporfin for hair loss. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. But before giving you the fresh news about vertoporfin, if you're new on the topic, let me just refer you to the video I've already posted about vertoporfin where I talk in big and huge details uh, about the mechanism of action of vertoporfin, how it actually works, the science behind it, and the efficacy and utility of vertoporfin. So if you're absolutely new on the topic, I highly suggest you go watch that video first. But to give you a quick brief sum up, vertoporfin works by inhibiting scar tissue formation. As we know, the only reason that we have a limited donor supply is because we induce so much trauma to the tissue when we harvest hair from the donor area so that it could be grafted into the recipient area to the point that that tissue creates a scar tissue through different pathways and vertoporfin interferes with those particular pathways and inhibits scar formation. So after a regular hair transplant with administering vertoporfin, theoretically, we could find the donor area normal healthy tissue, which differs from scar tissue by three things. Scar tissue doesn't have hair follicles, healthy tissue does. Secondly, the elasticity. We know that scar tissue is less elastic than normal tissue. And thirdly, sebaceous glands, which are absent in scar tissue. Those two characteristics are irrelevant for our topic, but the hair follicle, the first one is relevant. And by administering vertoporfin, we could prevent that donor area to turn into scar tissue. Thus, it would theoretically give us limited donor supply. This is, of course, a very brief version of all of it. You can watch the full version on that video. And where we left off there is, I told you that there is a uh, Jordanian doctor called Dr. Barghouti, and he's conducting his own study in his own clinic with one patient, and he's providing us with consistent regular photographic updates. And I've told you that the data and the photos seem promising, but I told you also that we're waiting for the biopsy results that Dr. Barghouti did on that particular patient on month number three, I think, after the hair transplant. I'm not sure you could double check me on that, but we got the biopsy results and I've actually posted it on the comment section, but I will repeat it here for the sake of those viewers who did not uh, see that comment. So Dr. Barghouti took two biopsy specimen, one from an area that did not have vertoporfin administration and one with vertoporfin administration. So one test area and one control area. And the control area demonstrated a follicular hyperkeratosis, focal follicular plugging, focal lichenoid perifollicular lymphoid cell infiltrate and perifollicular concentric fibrosis in some hair vocals and focal dermal fibrosis and other characteristics that are a sign of a scar tissue which is normal this is remember the control area that did not have vertoporfin administration but in the test area the second biopsy specimen that dr Bergothi took it showed follicular hyperkeratosis focal follicular plugging but no lichenoid perifollicular lymphoid infiltrate. Also, no disc keratosis of the follicular epithelium, no perifollicular concentric fibrosis, and minimal dermal fibrosis, already demonstrating the efficacy of vertoporfin. And when it comes to hair follicles, there were 10 hair follicles seen, 3 in antigen phase, 5 in catagen phase, and 2 in telogen phase. Compare that to the control specimen, where five hair follicles are seen, one in antigen, two in catagen, and two in telogen phase. So there is almost the double 
of the number of hair follicles in the test area where vertoporfin had been administered versus where it did not. Then this left a lot of people speculating about the efficacy of vertoporfin because previously we thought that it would lead to complete hair regeneration. So it should be 100% more. But in this case, we have uh, only 50% hair regeneration. So does this mean that vertoporfin will actually lead to 50% regeneration, which is not bad, by the way, we just have to change the term unlimited donor supply to extensive donor supply, which will solve probably the problem of hair loss for everyone, even the bad candidates. But my opinion on this is it's too early to judge and I've even said this on the comment section, we need more data. Remember guys, this is only one patient, one patient of Dr. Barghouti and uh, in the news I'll be giving you in just a minute, this will change. But regarding this particular biopsy specimen, it's too early to judge and to say that vertoporfin only regenerates 50% or certainly regenerates 50%. We just need more data. And more data comes as Melvin from the Hair Restoration Network, which is doing God's work on Earth. To be honest, I just want to take this as an opportunity to thank him if he ever watches this video for the huge effort he's doing in the sake of research in vertoporfin and for the hair loss community overall. But um, in short, Melvin managed to convince a couple more hair surgeons to do their own vertoporfin trials on their own patients in their own clinical practice. One of those is Dr. Patella from Brazil, if I'm not mistaken. And the second one, which got in touch with Dr. Barghouti or Melvin, doesn't really matter, to be honest. What matters is Dr. Bloxham from New York have agreed also to conduct his own vertoporfin trial. And not only he agreed, but he already conducted his own trial on the 7th of July or 11th of July and he conducted the study not only on one patient but on three patients and what's even better about Dr. Bloxham's new trial about vertoporfin is that he is conducting it with patients that are undergoing FUT hair transplant as opposed to FUE hair transplants which Dr. Barghouti is doing. By the way Dr. Barghouti is also conducting a second study with a adjusted uh, administering protocol of vertoporfin just because his first study was not 100% conclusive. So now we can comfortably say that in the upcoming months, uh, Dr. Bloxham, for example, said that he will do a biopsy specimen in three months after the first hair transplant. Uh, we can comfortably say that we should wait a good amount of a good chunk of data that will give us either good news or bad news about vertoporfin. And this is huge news, guys, for all the hair loss community members. We have never been so close to achieving such a breakthrough in hair loss as this uh, vertoporfin trial. So I want you to be optimistic, but also careful not to give yourself false promises. Just keep waiting for the data and spread the word about vertoporfin to your local uh, hair loss surgeon maybe or to your friends and to forums so that more people hear about this new drug which is not new by the way in any way shape or form vertoporfin had been used since the 90s i think in ophthalmology it's been used for a condition called age-related macular degeneration where there is a uh, loss of tissue in one area of the retina called the macula and macula is the area of the retina responsible for the central vision. Some people experience loss in that particular area and vertoporfin is known to inhibit scar formation in that area, the macula. So it's not new and its utility in specialities beyond ophthalmology have been discussed and proposed recently in different science magazines, but this is the first time that we get a full-blown study about vertoporfin in the hair loss industry. And if you're wondering how does vertoporfin actually work, and you're maybe somewhat lazy to go watch my video, which is 12 minutes about vertoporfin, the first video I posted, let me give you a somewhat detailed version about the mechanism of action of vertoporfin. It works by inhibiting the YAP protein, which is the pathway through which fibroblasts gets activated 
when induced with mechanical trauma. So when we get injured, when our skin get injured, it has the capacity and the ability to fully regenerate into healthy tissue all over again. But when that particular trauma reaches a certain point, that activates the YAP protein, which uh, activates the fibroblasts, and fibroblasts then express a gene within them. It's called the ingrown one gene. Once that ingrown one gene is activated, a tendency for that healthy tissue to now turn into scar tissue. So the theory behind vertoporfin and vertoporfin is an inhibitor of the YAP protein. Remember, the one that's responsible for activating fibroblasts that will go to express the ingrown one gene. Uh, vertoporfin by inhibiting YAP protein inhibits and prevents the whole process of scar formation. And this is not new data. This have been already confirmed recently in a study from Science Magazine, where science have managed to create a population of fibroblasts with ingrown one gene inactivated and that particular colony of ingrown one negative fibroblast when subjected to mechanical trauma did not or could not create any scar formation or scar tissue so this also demonstrates the efficacy of vertoporfin and the whole theory behind scar formation i'll make sure to put the link to that particular study although i talked about it before but i'll make sure to put it in the description but for now i wanted to do one thing talk about vertoporfin on reddit on different forums to your local hair loss doctor and to your friends and to everyone just spread the word that's the one thing we can do to help speed up this process remember things like this take time it could take months it could take years or it could take even more it only depends on how much we spread the word and the number of doctors that participate in this great breakthrough in my opinion for the hair loss industry i hope you enjoyed the video guys and you're excited about the news as i am and with this uh, don't forget to leave a like if you found the video informative subscribe to the channel and as always stay safe